Hello and welcome to another video review by Rich from BenchTech. Today we're going to be looking at another Foxconn motherboard from their Quantum Force range. Um, this is called the Inferno Katana GTI. This is one of uh, two motherboards they've bought out in their Intel P55 chipset range. And this is the lower one of the two. Uh, the one that sits above it is just called the Inferno Katana. Um, this one supports the Core i5 and Core i7 CPUs. Those are the, the new ones with the LGA1156 socket. So don't confuse that with the, the older Core i7 CPUs. They physically won't fit in this motherboard. Um, on the on the boxes we see here, this supports ATI Crossfire X technology and NVIDIA SLI, which is uh, good to see. Um, official support for both of those. Let's, uh, let's get the... Uh, the box open and, and see what we've got inside here. Um, firstly, a little bit about BenchTech. We're a, a bunch of extreme overclocking enthusiasts. Uh, we like to test motherboards and equipment to their, their limits. Basically, we'll find out exactly what it's capable of right on the ragged edge. So we're not interested in stability um, as much as how far we can uh, physically push the motherboards, um, processors, graphics cards, whatever we, we, do, we do a review on. So uh, there we have it. There's the Inferno Katana GTI motherboard. Um, follows on from the styling of the X58 board range with the, the black PCB, um, black styling with red accents. I think that looks that looks great. I, I do, really do like the, uh, the look of these Foxconn Quantum Force motherboards. Um, so let's have a look around the, around the board here. We've got dual channel DDR3 memory. Um, that's support for up to 1800 um, megahertz RAM on, on, on there and uh, 1800 megahertz if you if you overclock uh, it's 1600 as as per the Intel spec um, moving on down we've got the core well the uh, p55 socket or the LGA 1156 socket here it's slightly smaller than the core i7 or x58 socket um, and it's got a, a new latch here that you use to to open up the CPU, which uh, I quite like actually. I think that's a little bit better than the uh, than the previous sockets we've seen from Intel. That's a, a good addition. The power delivery for the the CPU here is um, an eight phase delivery, and two phase delivery for the what's called the uncore of the the CPU. That's the the VTT um, voltage or uncore voltage, as, as Foxconn referred to it as. So that's uh, that's the same type of power delivery that we've seen on their X58 range that's worked very well um, and handled all of the uh, extreme overclocking I've done on those boards. So I think that'll, that'll be fair enough, but obviously I'll give you a, a lowdown in the actual review. Um, moving on down. <coughs> Sorry, I've got a cough. Um, we've got the uh, heatsink here for the, well this doesn't actually cool anything at this specific point here, it's got a, an LED, pulsating uh, light LED there, but this is the, the heatsink connected with a heat pipe to the, the Southbridge chip here, um, uh, which takes the heat, moves it up to where the, the, the socket area is and the airflow from the processor is, so that's why we've got a heatsink there. Um, also we're used to seeing heatsinks in that sort of area. Um, even though there isn't actually anything under it this time. Um, here we can see we've got two red uh, PCI Express slots. Um, these are 16, well the first one is a 60, full 16 times slot, um, electrical, and when you've got one graphics card in it will run at full 16 times PCI Express 2 um, frequency. When you put two, mother, uh, two graphics cards in this motherboard, or in any P55 motherboard, um, these two slots drop down to eight times. Um, PCI Express 2. So I wouldn't worry too much about that unless you're planning on running say some, some really high-end cards like uh, the GTX 295 or the ATI 4870X2. Uh, those cards are likely to maybe be bottlenecked a little bit by that eight times um, uh, speed. But if you're going to be looking at those sorts of cards I'd suggest you look at uh, a full um, X58 based motherboard um, and go with the uh, the equivalent Core i7 uh, CPU for that. If you're if you're just looking for a single graphics card motherboard or a mid-range um, dual uh, card motherboard, then then this is this is what you're going to be looking at. You can also run a third graphics card in here, but this this third slot is going to be running at a four times speed. So it's it's not it's going to limit the limit the graphics card. Um, I suggest you probably don't do that. Just just go for the X58 motherboards if you're going to be looking looking at two high-end or three graphics cards. Um, 
that saying that it does do that so if you if you if you did want to buy this motherboard it can support um, Crossfire X and SLI across those three slots um, we've got two PCI Express one time slots in here and uh, a PCI slot there as well for maybe for, for an old sound card or, or wireless card that you may have have uh, that you want to use in this um, moving around um, across the bottom of the board here you'll notice we've not got a floppy drive connector which Foxconn would usually locate at the bottom of the uh, the board here we've only got this uh, this red header here for IDE so there's no longer any support for floppy drives which I don't think anyone will miss if I'm honest um, if we've got if we if we carry on we've got three USB headers here now combined with the back plate that allows for up to 14 um, USB ports we've got eight on the back back plate here by default um, to just go over the back plate we've got the PS2 keyboard port uh, uh, a digital audio and an optical audio connector out we've got a, a reset CMOS button um, uh, gigabit Ethernet and 7.1 channel surround uh, sound there um, moving on back around to, to the motherboard we've got the two BIOS chips again um, hot swappable so you can pull those out um, if uh, if in, in the worst case scenario you were to corrupt both BIOSes um, and effectively render the motherboard useless you could literally just buy a, a new new motherboard chip a BIOS chip and slot it back in and it would work that's that's different to some of the manufacturers they, they don't let you do that which I do like to see that and it's a, a good feature that I like to point out bottom of the board here we've got a, a power and a reset button uh, that, that makes my life easy for when it's it's not in a PC case and it's on my um, my bench my bench rig um, so I can just turn the motherboard on and off um, six serial ATA two ports there as standard uh, we've got a debug LED here which I, I always like to see uh, moving on around uh, you've got the power connector and your, your two phase memory um, power uh, in there one thing to highlight on the edge of the board here is we see uh, we see the read points uh, these are voltage read points for the motherboard um, and uh, we've got a number of different ones I'm not going to go through them all because there's, there's lots of voltages to read off there which is very good um, and I like to see that because I like to be checking what, uh, what where the voltages are going, not just at, at, at one point, at, at multiple points dur during a, a benchmarking session, so at idle and under load. Um, moving on around, I think that's the, the front of the board covered, a little look at the back, not an awful lot there. Got uh, a retention bracket, hit, retention bracket here for the 1156 socket, it's roughly the same sort of size as the uh, um, 1366 uh, socket as the, the x58 motherboard um, features so that's a, a look around the motherboard um, I don't think I've forgotten uh, much or anything off there um, let's have a look at the accessories case um, pretty standard affair in here we see the it's just a, a straightforward IDE cable there we've got a CD which I took out of the packaging there um, quick start guide for getting you off and running and uh, the motherboard user manual the back panel plate um, and uh, a few serial ATA connectors there we've also got a single SLI bridge there um, if you if you want to run that uh, they give you a, a bracket for it so go back to the motherboard here um, uh, one last thing I yeah, guess I should point out is these these two slots are within one spacing um, well effectively one or two depending on which way you look at it spacing uh, between each other so if you've got a, a dual slot graphics card that intakes from the outside so this way um, if you put a second card in there it's potentially gonna gonna um, mess up the airflow so it's one thing to bear in mind um, it may not affect you but uh, just to, to point out there but you can see that from the uh, from the slots here, you've also got this um, this uh, sort of cover on here called Eye Tweaker. Um, that Foxconn claim to be uh, sort of something they've put into their BIOS, um, which uh, should help with uh, voltages and, and tweaking options and things like that. I'm yet, I'm yet to power this board up yet, so I'll let you know about that when I when I can do that. Um, so there you have it. There's the Foxconn Inferno Katana GTI motherboard, um, and I I hope to be able to. To, to bring you some some good results some strong overclocking results with this motherboard when I get a when I get a processor to go in here there you go folks hope uh, that's all you need covered um, if not just shoot me a, 
a message on the forums um, and uh, I'll get back to you. My, my username is rich, R1CH. So there you go, guys. Um, and I'll see you again. Bye.